Welcome to the Women's Wellness Podcast, where we interview experts in various fields with the goal of empowering women to make informed decisions about their health, life, and family. I'm your host, Amy Jane Smith, and I would like to thank you for tuning in today to get comfy while I introduce our next guest. So welcome to the Women's Wellness Podcast. My name is Amy and I'm your host and today I'm very excited to bring on Kirsty Watt from Beautiful Fitness based in Rotorua. Um, she is a pre and postnatal specialized personal trainer and also a women's health advocate and that is why I've got her on today because she started a petition last week. Um, only last week. <laughs> um, the title of the petition was to improve rehabilitation care for New Zealand women post birth and it smashed its first goal of 5000 and it's currently sitting at 8117 signatures as of just before pressing record. So 128 now, Amy. 126. <laughs> it's flying. It's flying. So I won't say any more, but I just want to welcome you and yeah tell me more about why you got so fired up to start this petition um i mean you'll know because you deal with mums and stuff but um when we're in our classes and i quite often like if i have a new person that comes to like the beginner ones or whatever Um, or someone that I've known and they've given birth. And we talk about, I say, like they've pre-screened already and it says, do you, have you seen a physio? And they'll either be yes or no, most of them are no. Or have you had your six week checkup? And most of them are no. And I talk to them about it and it's it's like, (laughs) why are these ladies not getting these checkups? And I know Mm. because I never got them. Like, yeah, like, I mean, because there's like a gap between where your midwife leaves you in for my midwife here i think finished with me at four weeks wow and then you meant to see the gp at the six weeks and plunkett takes over at six weeks um but it's like there's this gap but then there's a huge gap afterwards so we say six weeks is when you can start exercising Mm. but I mean, that's different for everyone. And then for some people, they don't feel anything until they start exercising because they might go, I'm going to go back to running. And they don't feel that there's anything wrong until they start that higher impact type activity. Like if they're going to a random boot camp and they're doing star jumps and that kind of crap. So it's a lot of people don't feel it, but it's in that period that no one's looking after us. Yeah. Like they look after the baby, they don't look after us. So I think I just, I was just sick of it. It's been like, I think, how many years have I been doing this? Four, five, five or six. I I met you back in 2017. I know you were doing that kind of stuff before then, I think. And it's it's like, why why is nothing being done? But people have tried, like Christy Horton's tried. Um, I've got a a new friend that's a lawyer in Nelson that um, (laughs) she's actually tried and she's got her, her physio and her urologist backing her up. Like, and she's actually done a lot of work in terms of um, the official information act. So she's got me some stuff on that. Um, Awesome. Yeah. So she was about to launch a petition, but it just so happened somehow I snuck in there, but I wasn't like, I sent the letter off to the minister to highlight stuff, thinking, yeah. not really thinking they'll fob us off. And I thought, yeah. well, and that we- was Julianne Jenser, is that right? Yeah. yeah. That was probably like two weeks ago, two or three weeks ago, I think. Mm-hmm. And then I thought, well, continence week's coming up. So we might as well just fire one out for that as a more of a highlight, or a, I guess I never really thought it through that much because I'm not that kind of person I just do sometimes stupid things um and then I just run away about consequences later and (laughs) but yeah (laughs) that's just me so it's um so now I've got to actually have a proper plan in place so the petition has been edited a few times from the original one we started with with the advice of physios and that kind of thing as well um so it was more 
like to get some change, like any change is better than nothing, what we've got at the moment, which is technically nothing. And I know with my DHB, and it's not rubbishing the physios or anything up there, but I don't think the service is adequate at the yeah. hospital. And I know with the public system, the waiting list is always so long yeah. that people people often fall through the cracks, don't they? And then a lot of people can't afford private care. And there's this kind of cloud in the middle where yeah. things just go missing. And I think you even get the DHBs aren't actually, like the physios at the hospital, a lot of them, from stories I've heard, it's not my personal experience, but a lot of stories I've heard, they aren't even internally checking these ladies. And then I heard from a, I've been messaging a physio in Taupo and I said, look, I've got like three things wrong with me plus a tailbone injury from my second. And she goes, oh, that's normal to have like three or more. <laughs> like, but and she goes, you're not, she goes, it's not, it's not, it's not uncommon to have more than one thing when you think it's just right. like a weak pelvic floor sort of thing and it could be something else and something else contributing to it. Okay, so, so she wasn't saying it was normal and deal with it. Like everyone, no, 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 no. She yeah. was saying as like it's quite normal when they, because she's like literally does it properly and has concerns as well. So she okay. was, for yeah. you... It's normal, so don't panic. <laughs> You're not a special case where you've got all these things. But she says it's quite normal when people do finally figure out what's going on. It's not just one thing. It could yeah. be a matter of different things. So, yeah, yeah. sorry, we got off track. But it's, it's, and I just, I mean, my midwife care was awesome for both my kids. I actually had four midwives. Um, okay. So I had my lead maternity carer for both of them. But, she was off that weekend, so I had her off-sider for the birth and then my normal one for the rest of it. And then kind of I had for my second, and he came at home and she got her workmate to come because it was a unexpected home delivery, um, to come and help. And she was actually going on leave, um, so she passed me over to her. So I had her for a couple of weeks and then the other one back. So I actually had a few midwives. Um, and all of them amazing with the births and um, all of that, like trying to assist with breastfeeding or um, in my case, it was more mixed feeding and all that. That was exceptional. But um, I think the gap is in that between the midwife and then the rest of your life, basically. Yeah. Because, yeah, they, there's not the, some of the doctors aren't even telling people how bad the prolapses are. Um, and yeah, or some of them, yeah. they're just not checking. They're not asking yeah. um, or they're not booking people in for that checkup. And they're not actually asking, do you have any issues leaking and all that kind of pain and all that. Yeah, kind which of kind of leads me on to my next question is, um, so obviously I kind of deal with this as well, but what sort of experiences and what sort of issues have you noticed people have mentioned? So there's been hundreds of comments oh, on yeah. that petition. And a lot of it, I saw you sharing some, and a lot of it's quite heartbreaking. The, what, probably the most heartbreaking yeah, one was, was the one that had to take a part-time job to fund her own care after they told her she had to just deal with it. Like, live, that's just life now. Mm. I'm like... <laughs> yeah like it's it's i don't know it's it's a gap in that system as well but um yeah i was like literally crying read i spent two and a half hours on sunday because i didn't even know how to find them because yeah. i was new to this petition thing and then i went through it and i was like oh my god it's crazy and just read and then now i just probably read them every hour because there's at least four or five new ones every hour going up um, but just yeah. a lot of it, people living in pain or um, like leaking, um, like just not not being referred on is a big mm. one. Like people, they're just telling them, people with the professionals are telling them, oh, it's just how it is now. Just, yeah. 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 Also, and that's, that's a huge thing. Yeah. I mean, also, 
just thinking about it, even like I know you and I know Jen Dugard and she's got a thing at the moment talking about your six week checkup is not enough. Mm. A lot of people aren't even getting there by the sounds of it. We're not. Australia is better than us. Um, a physio um, told me there's a, they've got a plan in place 2021 right I think it's with the Australian physio something I don't know I've, I'm trying to find it but I haven't had time at the moment yeah. to have a look so they've got a plan in place which is better than what we are and she said that we're a few years behind generally right. um, but we need to be ahead really yeah we need to we need to be leaders in this and tell I suppose what can we do as personal trainers do you think to help tell women or show women the way and where to go if they felt like they haven't been heard in the medical side i mean you you've just got to keep pushing push it's your body you need to find the answers like i mean i've got people that should have gone to a physio but two years ago and every week it's the same thing you need to go you need to go and that's Mm. some other problem with um mums is that we don't put that priority on our on ourselves. We we always put the kids yeah. first or the family first, and we're kind of last. Yeah. Um, so, like we will be the last ones to look after ourselves. But if you don't do it, who's going to do that? Mm. So, if you're having any form of leaking and, and pain and that kind of thing, or it just doesn't feel right down there. Um, it, you, I mean, you, the minimal you can do is go see your GP. Yeah. But yeah, it's like I would just self refer yourself to a physio for a woman's health check because you'll yeah. get the answers straight away. You won't have to wait. I mean, yeah, it costs money, but um, at the moment, unfortunately, that's the way it is. But you just have to keep every week, it's like you need to go, you need to go, you need to go. And eventually, they will go. <laughs> Yeah, but also as personal trainers, is to do the courses, do Jen Dugard's course, do um the Burrell course, do the Continent New Zealand one, and I think that's the bare minimum is that Continent New Zealand course mm. because that will give you a decent understanding, and then do these other ones, and like there's a heap of them as yeah. well. Um, Girls Gone Strong online. I'm halfway through the women's uh, coaching one, which. Taking a while. Um, I'm not even halfway. That's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. But uh, there's heaps of different yeah. um, pre and post. There's a list as well, isn't there, on um, yeah. continents New Zealand. Yeah. So anybody who's done that, which, as you say, is the bare minimum, really, yeah. and they go through a lot. They're very mm-hmm. informative in yeah. the continents New Zealand course, um, and they have a list of every trainer who's done that so if you're a woman listening to this and you do leak or have a prolapse or have anything that you want addressing go and see a trainer who is aware of these issues and go and see a physio i've got a directory of physios i'll post that in the show notes because yeah we need everyone needs to see one i'm going to see one when i move get to know her where are you moving to to? i'm moving to pocono but that's mm-hmm. an aside. I'll talk to you about that in a moment. Good, good ice creams down there. <laughs> they do. Yeah. Yes. So, um, so what's the goal for the petition? Um, what, what would you like to see achieved from this in like the ideal world? In the ideal world, because <laughs> the more I dig into it, my ultimate thing, yeah. the ultimate goal is that there are, um, kind of like a post birth nurse type person that looks after you for the first year you as the mother for at least the first year and that's to a talk to you about this kind of stuff help with any issues postnatal depression Mm. um, any of that stuff if you're having issues that you don't have that village supporting you you've at least got someone supporting you um and showing you because i mean babies change all the time like it's what they were doing last week they might not necessarily be doing that anymore they might have moved on so it's to help you with that stuff because i think 
there's just so much education that's missing but also to be the one that talks to you about your pelvic floor that maybe even can assess you um mm. the bare minimum of the continents checklist um from continents new zealand but even if they were able to actually say look you've got a prolapse because i mean ones giving pap smears can actually see that these people have a prolapse so yep. or feel that they have so maybe that could be it and maybe assess them slightly and then refer them on to the physio because uh, essentially if this if my goals were to go through the physio system gonna get slammed but it's it's yeah. to actually go because a lot of people won't actually be affected by this there's there's a huge number of people that don't get affected by it but there's also a very huge number of people that are so having that person to actually be the advocate for the mother yeah. rather than plunk it or tipu aura or whoever else is looking after that baby um there is someone for the mother and they can help with the the physical health and the mental health and the community type thing um that would be an overall goal but um yeah mm. but it's more just having that funding a for for people to be assessed with a physio and i've been questioned about the one for pregnancy and I sort of thought about it and I was like, well, there's other things that aren't necessarily related to the pelvic floor, but a physio can help with, like the pubic yeah. um, synthesis. Like pubic always, synthesis this yeah, I always get that word. Like that, yeah. like that kind of thing, they can tape um, sciatica, like all those type of things that can affect you, like sore knees and stuff. So mm. it's not just about the pelvic floor as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and carpal tunnel, all of those real cool things that you can get when you're pregnant. Um, but yeah, so just, it's about having that whole body attitude as well. And pregnancy, like you can be uncomfortable, I won't swear, but really uncomfortable during pregnancy. But, um, and having that in there just for the people that need it. And it will only be a small amount of people that need it. Um, so yeah that's that's the goal for that and the two years is because people take so long to get help <laughs> um yeah. often or they might not be active and they might not realize there's a problem until they actually start being active um yeah. and then continents new zealand really needs more funding um i haven't been in contact with them but um kirsten does a lot of work with them and so she kind of understands how yeah. the lack of funding. Campbell just for those who don't know. <laughs> yeah. uh, so they, and they don't just deal with postnatal stuff. They deal with the elderly, um, men's health, like prostate cancer. And children and, well. stuff, and children, yep. So, yeah. they, so this, like postnatal things, like this much of that much. Yeah. Continents New Zealand and their It's funding. like picking at a thread and we're just yeah. unraveling. Yeah. So it's a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. Um, What's the other one? Oh, I can't remember. <laughs> and were you looking at um, ACC, uh, ACC taking a role as well? So ACC, you literally have to fight and fight to get ACC coverage. And they will go through all the birth notes and all that stuff to see that there was a um, uh, mistreatment. I don't know if that's the word for it, but something happened yeah. during labour. And so your midwife or obstetrician will have to admit that there was an issue. Um, yeah, and that's... Yeah, and that can take months. scary. Yeah. Topic as well. Yeah, and so I think going off their website, it's, it's like it's actually only going to cover the baby if that was injured during labour. Yeah like yeah because anything like tearing is normal yeah so if you have no sensation that's just a normal thing that happens that wasn't an accident no. I'm sorry but if you tear anything else and damage a muscle but that's like, an accident i mean for example the obstetrician might have the von truth cap there one foot on the bed trying to yank it out <laughs> and maybe they should just think hmm <laughs> that might have caused a bit of damage there. Yeah. It may need to be referred. Yeah. Like it's, yeah, I don't know. It's, 
I, I just think ACC need to take uh, actually cover a lot of this. Mm -hmm. And yeah, they don't at the moment. And even my physio said she thinks she's had one case where it was actually covered and that was had to be fully like fought for. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So but in summary, so um, where can we find that? Let's just have a look at the link, see if I can see it and refresh the page. So is it change.org is yeah. where the petition yeah. is. So if anyone wants to sign it, they can go there. Oh, it's climbing again. I've just refreshed the page. Let's have a look. It'll take a while. It'll take a while. It's counting. I'll go back to it. Yeah, I'll go into it and it'll tell me. So I'll post the link um, in the comments when I share this on Facebook and YouTube. And I will also pop it in the show notes as well. So we've gone up to 8,142 in the time we've been. There you go. In the time we've been talking, it's gone up by, what was it, 12? Yeah. So far in half an hour. What was it going before? Hundreds. Uh, it was like a, at one stage a hundred an hour, but then it yeah. did slow yesterday for a wee bit. So hopefully um, if anyone didn't know that this petition exists, I recommend going to that link and signing it. And yeah, let's, let's make some change happen. So what, what would you like to say to summarize for any um, for the women listening? Um, just, just get yourself a check out. If you've had a baby recently, um, go and even not recently. Yeah. Even not recently, yeah. but, more recently if you've yeah. had a baby make sure if it's if you're at that six week mark please book yourself in with the gp at the same time that you do the baby and talk to the gp if you have any concerns get them to check you if you are happy with that um a lot of people probably won't be um but it's i mean definitely if you have concerns and if you are exercising don't just jump straight back into like crazy running what you were doing before you got pregnant type of thing just take it easy build yourself up um find a great little program there's heaps around like amy's and kirsten and i think linda has one yeah sure. well. or, or find yourself a really good local class because it's not um it's not just about the physical side there's a great physio in the mount that her belief is exercise in that first year is about recovery mm -hmm. um connection with and others community isn't it yeah, yeah community and me time and yes. that's what it should be for the first year which i think is awesome um and yeah just look after yourself fight for your body fight for your body in 30 years time yeah yes fight for your body i'll say that again <laughs> that's it okay <laughs> fantastic all right so if anyone is down your way in um sunny rotorua it's not how right. do they get in touch with you is it sunny yeah. at the moment or is it raining like here yeah um you can just google mums and bubs classes road to ruin will come up straight away but um yeah beautiful fitness we're on facebook instagram and there's a website you can book in by the website you can literally there's two different types of classes and actually three two for a younger mum so there's a beginner one which is more of a rehabilitation low intensity sort of thing and then there's an advanced one which is like where you'll get a bit more of an ass kicking um and then there's we've got an older ladies class as well my mature woman class so, yeah to wonderful i'll pop all those links in the show notes thank you very much for joining me no worries thank you for listening to the women's wellness podcast for links and show notes please visit www.connecthealth.fitness forward slash podcast i would love for you to subscribe to the channel so you get notified when we release our next episode and please share with anyone who you think might benefit thank you again i look forward to seeing you soon